Kia ora koutou katoa for Amanda Campbell Tuku Ingoa. Uh, I'm Amanda Campbell from Tatai Ahuro Core Education. This is the third webinar of four on preparing for the 2023 Digi Awards. So welcome if this is your first time to the webinar and if you've been before, welcome back to this, the third, the third webinar where today I'm going to just share my screen with you. Um, where we're going to be looking at some of the creativity tools, uh, in particular photography, that uh, can help you preparing for your entry. So today we're going to look at how to take photos and some videoing skill, skills and tools that you can share with your children. There's definitely a deliberate act of teaching that needs to take uh, place in your classrooms when teaching children how to take photographs uh, and we definitely need to give our tamariki time to practice and to experiment. So some of the skills and tips and tricks that we can give you around taking good photography uh, follow in the next few slides. So first of all, the rule of thirds. So there's a, a lovely wee video that I'm just going to, we're going to watch on here, uh, which is a fabulous activity to integrate into your classroom with your children. Uh, it is called the rule of thirds or making the rule of thirds grid. So I'll just click onto this for you. And photography is one of my favorite hobbies on um, outside of teaching. So before we jump into learning all about the camera and the lenses, we're going to talk about something called composition. Now, I know composition seems like a big word, but really, it's just how you frame a picture. And if you've ever played tic-tac-toe before, this is going to be a very easy lesson for you to remember. So come follow along with me as we talk about something called the rule of thirds. When looking through your camera, I want you to imagine a tic-tac-toe grid. This grid divides your picture into thirds. Both the horizontal and vertical sections are split into three sections. So you might be wondering what the rule of thirds is. So the rule of thirds looks something like this. And it's a tool that you can use to help frame your subject. So for the rule of thirds, it almost looks like a tic-tac-toe grid where there's line, vertical lines going down and your horizontal lines going across, dividing your frame into nine equal boxes. Now the point of the rule of thirds is to help you frame your subject. And you want to make sure you're not framing your subject right in the middle, but more on one of these intersecting lines right here, right here, and right here, and right here. You have four of them. So if you're taking a portrait of someone, you don't want to stick their face right in the middle, but maybe off to the side to show a little bit more of your scene in the background. Now, if you're doing a landscape, um, you want to place your horizon line, and that's a term we use a lot when creating art in my classroom, so everyone should know what that is. But you want to place your horizon line on one of these horizontal lines going with, uh, across the top or across the bottom. So for our first project together, you're going to be making your own viewfinder with your lines going vertical and horizontal across. Now, I'm going to show you all the steps on how to make this fun project, and then you can kind of take it outside and kind of frame up your own shots um, for a little bit of practice before you kind of dive into using the real camera. So follow along with the steps on making your own rule of thirds grid. Now that you were familiar with the term rule of thirds, let's check out a few examples of the rule of thirds in action. This is my daughter, Ava, and you can see how I lined up her face on the left side of the frame. 
On this image, I lined up the tree with the two intersecting dots on the left. On this image, I lined up Ava on the three intersecting points. And for my last image, I lined up the barn with the bottom right intersecting point. At this point, I think we're all set to start our grid. All you need is a few simple materials, a piece of cardboard, four pieces of string, tape or glue, and some coloring supplies to decorate your grid with. Remember, make sure you separate your grid into nine equal boxes with your string. Okay. So a great activity to do with your tamariki. Lots of fun and lots of opportunity to go and explore and learn how to use the rule of thirds when taking photographs within your classroom environment. Uh, here are some examples of photos that have been taken using the rule of thirds. Uh, some other wonderful photography tips and tricks that you can, can teach your tamariki. So an establishing shot. So this is when you are uh, trying to show a setting uh, or, a, or a large view of the environment. You zoom the camera out as much as possible. The wide shot. So when you're trying to cover a large distance, need to teach the children how to take uh, a long shot photo of a scene uh, to show, show the background more so than a person. Uh, this is an example of a medium shot. So this is where it's focused on an object and in this particular case, a person. Uh, the person photos are usually taken from the waist up and the focus is definitely on the person uh, very little of the environment is shown. Uh, the two shot, very important to show emotion. So when you have uh, a couple of people in your shot, making sure that you take uh, photos of the interactions and try to get feeling between the two. This is another great shot, over the shoulder shot. The, this helps draw your action and your eye into the shot makes you feel like you're uh, a, a part of the shot. And this photo is taken from behind the person. The close-up, so tightly frames on a person or an object, shows the importance of the person or the object, uh, shows a lot of uh, finer detail uh, and great for showing emotion. The extreme close-up. This is really focused on attention, shows people or objects that how you wouldn't normally see them. This is the low angle shot, uh, like a worm view. So the camera is placed below the character or the object facing upwards. Uh, you can make people or objects look bigger or more powerful. Uh, you need to teach your tamariki how to use the timer on the iPads, if you're using iPads or phones, uh, so that their heads and hands aren't in the way. Uh, this is the opposite. This is a bird's eye view, so a high angle shot uh, can, be, can be more difficult to take. Uh, camera is above the object looking down it can make the subject look vulnerable or powerless, um, but also can create great effect. Um, before we go on to editing on your iPad, I just wanted to uh, make a suggestion that you try to include the, the photo practicing and experience uh, integrated into other subjects, wonderful uh, task you could send the children out as part of your literacy program or your numeracy program. You don't have to find time within your timetable to necessarily have photography uh, lessons. You might have to do that initially, but to actually get them out and practicing, you can try and integrate that into your everyday program. 
Uh, the other deliberate act of teaching that you need to share with your tamariki is how to do editing on your iPad. Uh, there are a couple of apps there that you can see that are quite good to use. Uh, Snapseed, Adobe Lightroom app and Slow Shutter app. Uh, so here's an example of on the iPad the way you can use these tools to make better quality photographs. Um, there's a lot of tools there and you know my best piece of advice is to play with those, to have a really good play around and experiment with uh, what looks what looks best, wide shot, closer in, zoom in, change uh, the light, how it looks, um, you know, whether it's bright or uh, do you want it to look like it's the morning or faded, etc. All of those tools are available when editing on your iPads. Um, and same here, uh, you can decide what size photo you want. You can reset photos and edit them so that they're square or original or need to fit a wall paper type space. Um, you can use the tools to uh, export and to um, make pop or faded and portrait landscape uh, and also don't forget uh, the zoom, uh, being able to zoom in and out. Movie makers don't just point the camera anywhere. Uh, they create professionals. Uh, they understand the set of rules to create beautiful images, as you can see this beautiful image here. And after you learn the rules, and you can see the rule of thirds uh, definitely here, uh, you can be more creative with your photography. Uh, here's a couple of things you could get your tamariki to, to try. Uh, learning the basic rules of composition uh, and experiment with different frames. Now you can use a, a person for this or a, a toy. Um, so when you're getting into videoing, uh, this is a great thing for the children to practice. You can do this in clips. Uh, and as you can see from this slide, you point the camera at the subject from the same height as the subject's eyes. Have your subject just look at the camera uh, to the side of the lens and record and watch and um, try, try, try again, see what other views you can get. Uh, this is a really important skill to teach our children. Uh, so about negative space. So using the rule of thirds can really help with establishing uh, this skill as well. If you want to record when you're videoing, not just in photography, the amount of headroom. So place your subject in the middle of the frame and keep the frame static. Check the headroom. You only need a little bit of space between the top of the frame and the top of the subject's head. Uh, otherwise, it's a waste of space. Uh, record and check and see whether you need to uh, tilt your camera, uh, which can help lessen the headspace with your object. Also, experiment with recording from unusual angles, the high angle, the eye level and the low angle. Um, you don't want to do too much of this within a, a video clip. You don't want the viewers to get uh, too dizzy, uh, but definitely opportunities to practice these and work out what's the best angle in which to hold the iPad or the device that you're using to record videos. There's also the opportunity to change the speed of a clip, and you can do this when you're when you're editing. Um, you can let's move this out of the way so you can see that better. Um, so that you can play back your recordings in slow motion, and this gives you the opportunity to emphasize an action, which gives you dramatic effect. 
Uh, so easy to do this in iMovie. You can tap the clip in the timeline, tap speed. You drag the slider left until the speed reads what you want it to read. You want, in this case, the example here is to double the duration of the clip. And you tap add. And a wee tip down there for better quality and smoother slow motion effects, try the slow mo effect in the camera while recording. Okay, um, I think that that is the end of the tips and tricks. Oh no, sorry, a couple more. Adjusting the balance when you record video clips. So with your iPads, they automatically adjust the camera's white balance to, uh, to produce the truest possible colours, but certain lighting um, condition can make the clips have an orange tint or a bluish tint. So you can add different tints uh, to adjust the warmth or the coolness of your photos. Um, again, give your, your tamariki the opportunity to experiment and play along with this before you begin your Digi Award entry. Uh, you want the children to be really familiar with the tools that um, they're using uh, prior to putting the whole entry together. Uh, here's some other things you could consider for accessibility. You could use a split screen if you had um, any of your tamariki who were able to sign language any um, specific messages you wanted shared. Uh, you could add text um, to assist people with hearing difficulties. Uh, and voice to text options when playing the movie through your laptop settings. Uh, and that concludes the third webinar for giving you till, um, tips and tricks for getting your Digi Awards entry ready. Thank you for joining. Our final webinar in this series will be on storytelling and using the design process. So. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. I hope that uh, this has been helpful for you and that uh, don't hesitate to get in contact with me at Amanda Campbell at Core Education. Uh, I'm very happy to come and assist you uh, and answer questions if you wanted to flick me an email. So. Good luck and have fun. Kakite anō.